Reliability is a much narrower concept than dependability and has a mathematical formulation. In contrast to availability, reliability is the probability that the system will still be working at the end of a particular mission. The reliability R of t is the reliability at time t. The idea of a mission is you can think of an airplane taking off from an airport with a 12-hour flight plan. In that situation, t is 12 hours, and R of t is the probability that the aircraft will complete that 12-hour mission without having to abort the flight. There are some assumptions behind that mission time t. We need to assume that between each mission, any broken components are repaired and a complete diagnostic is performed so that any redundancy that we're counting on to improve reliability is still there. In other words, we assume that every mission starts with a perfect fault-free system. The final term in the reliability equation is the failure rate, lambda, which is expressed in failures per hour. There is an assumption of random independent failures, which is generally useful for electronic components and computers, but might not apply to everything, especially mechanical components. An issue with lambda is that a constant failure rate is a bit of fiction. If we look at a graph of failure rate versus component age, often called a bathtub curve, we see that the constant failure rate is only true during the middle of the component life. At the beginning, components have a high failure rate due to manufacturing defects that manage to pass tests but make the component wear out very quickly. This is often called the burn-in phase and can last one hour or 10 hours or 100 hours, depending on the system. After burn-in, the useful product life does indeed provide a more or less constant lambda value. But we also need to worry about the end of product life where the lambda value increases as components begin to wear out due to use and age. It's important to note that the component age axis is logarithmic, so the burn-in period is relatively short, while the end-of-life period is a very long, slow ramp-up. But at some point, components wear out and need to be discarded or replaced because their lambda is no longer the lambda you used for your reliability equations. Considering only the flat part of the curve, we come up with an equation that gives the useful product life reliability. Because we assumed that failures were random and independent, we can use an exponential form to predict reliability. The equation is R of t equals e to the minus lambda t. The implication of this exponential equation is that it is much harder to successfully complete a long mission than a short mission. Intuitively, what this is showing you is that getting lucky for a bunch of hours in a row, where lucky means no failure, is a lot harder than only getting lucky for one hour. This graph shows a reliability curve for an example of one failure every million operating hours. As you can see, long missions are unreliable. Note the very steep increase as missions become longer than even a few hours. Thus, if you need to run a lot of long missions, you need very aggressively low values of lambda, much lower than 10 to the minus 6 per hour at the system level. Some systems operate continuously, so the idea of a mission is a little tricky. What you need to do is occasionally take the system offline to do diagnostic tests to restart the mission clock. Often you do that by having two systems a primary and a standby, and switching the primary and the standby back and forth so that the offline one of the redundant pair can be diagnosed and restart its mission.